it's important to have this record, not only for the sake of record, but to ensure that we open South Africans, open their eyes to the capability they undermine, capabilities they undermine, the national capabilities which they help them, which help them to survive such a monster. The first edition of the country report, therefore, makes an important contribution by providing a descriptive analysis based on the information available at the time. Secondly, it is important that we pick up lessons from our collective experiences to improve things going forward. It is true learning that we can sharpen our focus in enhancing the capability of the state to deal with outbreaks and other forms of disaster going forward. This is in line with priority one of the current government administration, which is about building a capable, ethical, and a developmental state. With this said, I acknowledge the foresight of the late Minister Jackson Tembu. May his soul rest in peace and the DPME team for recognizing at the onset of the pandemic that the research towards the development of a country report was, need, need, was need, needed to be initiated. The report as it is will be an important reference for future generations. The COVID-19 country report series therefore records the storyline and broad understanding of how South Africa has managed, responded to and curtail the negative effects of the pandemic. The immediate value of the research on the country report was derived during the research process, wherein a space was provided for interactions among the researchers and practitioners from various disciplines and capacities to build the South African narrative on the COVID-19. The first edition of the report that we are launching today has reference period of up to March 2021, basically covering the first and second waves of the pandemic. As you would know, after this date, further waves of COVID-19 infections occurred, which were characterized by the periods of increased transmissions in the country, which were around July 2021, December 2021, and to a lesser extent, May 2022. Research has continued towards the production of the second edition, which will cover an extended period and update the analysis in terms of understanding the effect of the pandemic and some of the outcomes of the interventions implemented. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, the scale of interruption was enormous. COVID-19 presented health crises with major implications for the economy and society. There were sad moments as the number of deaths escalated taking a toll on the families, friends, neighbors, and the frontline workers. Pre-existing socio-economic challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality were amplified. Among other things, valuable learning time at school was interrupted. The complex nature of the pandemic required a multi-pronged, multi-sector approach. Accordingly, South Africa's response was comprehensive and visibly led by the President and the Minister of Health Overall, response emphasized saving lives and saving livelihoods. The approach followed, South Africa, followed by South Africa was appropriate for local conditions and, res and resonates with the conclusion of the independent panel for pandemic preparedness and response that was commissioned by Director General of World Health Organization, which noted that Countries that successfully managed the COVID-19 pandemic adopted inclusive role of society and whole government approaches by seeking scientific guidance, engaging health professionals across the board, including community leaders and involving vulnerable and marginalized populations through a coordinated approach between national and sub-national governments. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand now, there are numerous lessons on what we have worked well and what have not worked well, and specific recommendations on what to do. With a year elapsed since the report's content was finalized, the context has changed 
and various decisions and actions relating to some of other recommendations have been made or acted upon.